गुड मॉर्निंग माय नेम इज डॉक्टर शुभम सैनी फ्रॉम वर्धमान महावीर मेडिकल कॉलेज एंड प्रोग्रेसिव हॉस्पिटल न्यू डेली द टॉपिक ऑफ माय ओरल पेपर प्रेजेंटेशन इज द डायग्नोस्टिक यूटिलिटी ऑफ स्पेक्ट्रल डॉपलर इन एक्यूट अपेंडिसाइटिस द एम ऑफ माय स्टडी वाज टू इवैल्यूएट द डायग्नोस्टिक यूटिलिटी ऑफ स्पेक्ट्रल डॉपलर इन एक्यूट अपेंडिसाइटिस एज एन एडजंक टू ग्रेस्केल अल्ट्रासोनोग्राफी The objectives of the study was to measure the PSV and RI values of the vascularity of appendix in patients clinically suspected to have acute appendicitis, and to find the cutoff values of PSV and RI, which can differentiate appendicitis from normal appendix. Another objective was to implement the cutoff values obtained to evaluate the diagnostic performance of spectral Doppler in acute appendicitis and its added advantage in the borderline category of diameter of 6 to 8 mm. Coming on to the introduction, right ileus muscle pain is one of the most common presentation in the emergency room, of which a major cause is acute appendicitis, and it remains the most common cause of abdominal pain that may require surgical intervention and hospitalization. The radiological evaluations for appendicitis have been constantly evolving over the recent years, and now the graded compression ultrasonography has emerged as the initial and the most commonly used imaging modality in diagnostic appendicitis and the conditions that may mimic appendicitis. USG is the preferred modality for appendicitis because of its easy availability, cost effectiveness, and no radiation exposure. USG can diagnose appendicitis by calculating the maximum outer diameter of the appendix, visualized as a blind ending, non-compressible, aperistaltic, tubular structure in the right iliac fossa, along with other signs of inflammation. But a major drawback of ultrasonography is that di diagnosing uh, appendicitis in the equivocal category. Where the diameter is 6 to 8 mm, uh, various studies have found that in this category, uh, approximately half of the patients did not even have appendicitis. So this limitation has been partially resolved by the adjustive use of color Doppler, as it can also detect peripheral wall hyperemia in acute appendicitis. Similarly, now spectral Doppler has emerged to provide an objective and quantitative data in the form of mean PSV. That is peak systolic velocity and RI resistive index values, which provide a statistically significant differentiation between a patient with appendicitis and without appendicitis. So the objective of our study was to assess the potential utility of PSV and RI values by appendicial spectral Doppler in diagnosing acute appendicitis. The study was a prospective observational analytical study. At a tertiary care hospital, on the study period of 18 months, uh, subjects of age between 12 to 15 years were, uh, with acute abdominal pain and clinically suspected of acute appendicitis were taken. Only those patients were included uh, in which the spectral Doppler parameters were obtained. Patients with complicated appendicitis, in which appendix not visualized, color not obtained, or no spectral Doppler parameters were obtained, were excluded from the study. So after obtaining informed written consent, brief history and examination findings, ultrasound was performed on the subject uh, using a linear array transducer of our ultrasound machine, Logic E. The technique used was a graded compression technique, and the patients were scanned in supine, left posterior oblique, and second loop supine positions. And appendix was visualized as an aperistaltic, non-compressible, tubular blind ending structure. The maximum outer diameter of the appendix was noted, along with other findings such as appendicolis, periappendicular fluid, ecogenic fat, etc. Color Doppler was then attempted on the appendicial wall, and after identification of the color signal within the wall, spectral Doppler was attempted, and a non-angle corrected intervention gate was used to provide spectral tracing indicating PSV and RI values. This is the uh, study flowchart. After uh, we have obtained the spectral Doppler parameters, uh, then the patient was followed up, and the patient undergoing surgery, his pathological report for the final uh, diagnosis was traced. And in patients not going undergoing surgery, clinical follow-up for resolution of symptoms or admission was done. Now sample size. Coming on to the sample size, uh, the significance of spectral Doppler parameters has been studied by Shin et al. So, uh, keeping that study as a reference study, the sample size obtained for our study was 32 patients, and to eliminate errors, the proposed sample size for the study was 40 patients. Coming on to the results, so out of a total of 150 patients who were 
uh, initially uh, came to us for suspected appendicitis. Uh, the patients were initially evaluated with grayscale ultrasonography, then color Doppler, and then spectral Doppler. Out of all those patients, spectral Doppler waveforms were obtained in 40 patients. On performing grayscale ultrasound, the appendicial diameters of the patient changed from 6 to 14 mm with a mean diameter of 9.16 mm. The mean diameter of uh, appendix in the patients with appendicitis was 9.96 mm, while it was 8.62 in patients without appendicitis. So, in both the groups, there was a significant difference. Along with grayscale ultrasound, ancillary findings like periapendicial uh, fat, inflammation, uh, fluid was also observed. Uh, however, there were no significant differences between the groups of patients having appendicitis and those without appendicitis. On spectral Doppler evaluation, the mean PSV value obtained in the patients with and without appendicitis was 19.2 cm per second and 14.15 cm per second, uh, showing significant difference between the two groups. The mean RI values were 0.62 and 0.52. However, there was no significant difference between the two groups in case of RI. This is the ROC curve obtained and from uh, for uh, appendicial diameter. The cutoff value obtained for appendicitis was 8.7 mm. So, at a cutoff of more than 8.7 mm, it predicted appendicitis with a sensitivity of 81%, sensitivity of 58%, a positive predictive value of 56.5%, uh, NPV of 82.4%, and a diagnostic accuracy of 67.5%. This is the ROC curve analysis of PSC values. And the cutoff value obtained was 11.8 cm per second and it showed a sensitivity of 93.8% and a specificity of 54.2%. Now, this is the third ROC curve of RA values. The cutoff obtained was 0.56 with a sensitivity of 81.2% and a specificity of 58.2%. On uh, we applied these cutoff values on 14 patients in the borderline category. And we found that the PSC predicted appendicitis with a sensitivity of 50%, specificity of 58.3%, PPB of 16.7%, uh, NPV of 87.5%, and added diagnostic accuracy of 57.1%. The cutoff value of RI predicted appendicitis with a sensitivity of 50%, specificity of 47, 41.7%, PPB of 12.5%, and NPV of 83.3%. Uh, the RA had 42.9% uh, diagnostic accuracy. Coming on to the discussion part, in our study, the mean maximum outer diameter of patients with appendicitis is 9.967, while the mean diameter of patients without appendicitis was 8.62 mm. Uh, As already described before, there was a significant difference between these two groups. Whereas in the borderline group, appendicitis was present in 12.5 cases. Uh, uh, when comparing to previous study in a study by Pender et al. in uh, 2014, a significant difference was seen in the uh, diameter between the surgical and the non-surgical groups of appendicitis. Similar results were also obtained by a study by G et al. So both these studies demonstrated that appendix diameter is an important grayscale criteria and differs significantly in the patients of appendicitis and those without appendicitis. <coughs> Now, uh, our cutoff values that we obtained was 8.7 mm after plotting ROC curve, and uh, the sensitivity, specificity, and PPV of our cutoff value was significantly lesser than a previous study by Kessler, uh, where the cutoff value of 6 mm obtained a sensitivity of 98%. So, in our study, the cutoff value of 6 mm had a sensitivity of 100%, by specificity a little poor at 4.2%. Now, if we consider the cutoff value at 7 mm, the sensitivity was 93.8%, the specificity of 16.7%, PPV of 42.9%, and NPV of 80%. Another study where our study had different results was from J et al. was that uh, 5.7 mm was found to be a reliable cutoff criteria in the study by G et al. But our results were comparable to the Results obtained in the study by Rittenbacher and uh, Chikaiza, where it was demonstrated that the cutoff values of 6 and 7 mm were highly sensitive, but they lacked specificity. 
and the study by Pendergast also concluded that adopting a 7 mm cutoff could actually maximize the sensitivity in specificity. Our study drew the same conclusion where it was concluded that appendicular diameter is more useful in actually excluding appendicitis than in confirming its presence. In the borderline category, only 14.2% of our patients had appendicitis, which was fairly low when compared to previous studies by Tau et al. or Oppenheimer, where the number was more than 50%. <laughs> the results of our study regarding the mean PSV of 19.2 cm and 14.5 cm in patients with and without uh, appendicitis was uh, similar to our reference study by Shin et al. The cutoff value obtained uh, uh, from the ROC curve was 10 cm per second in Shin et al. Uh, and uh, we obtained a value of 11.8 cm per second which were very close. And in another similar study by uh, Bakshande, uh, a cutoff value of 9.6 cm per setting was obtained. Uh, among those two studies, we actually obtained higher sensitivity as compared to Shenatol. However, the specificity and PPV was significantly low, uh, lower. Uh, the sensitivity of our set of PSV in our study was similar to that by uh, Bakshande. The mean RA value in our study was also comparable to that obtained in the study by Incesu et al. Our study also closely replicated the results obtained in the study by Shin et al. where the RA values of uh, were 0 0.69 and 0 0.5. Uh, the cutoff value of uh, RA that we obtained from our ROC curve was 0 0.56 and it had good sensitivity and specificity uh, and a good uh, NPV also. But when compared with the study by uh, Shin et al, uh, the results obtained in our study were better in case of sensitivity, sensitivity comparable in terms of NPV, but significantly lower in specificity and PPV. Uh, our study also demonstrated lower sensitivity and specificity uh, when compared to the study by uh, Bakshande. In our study, a total of 19 patients were operated and 24 patients were not operated. Uh, out of those 24 patients that were not operated, two had a recurrence of the symptoms and were subsequently operated. Uh, and we found that if we had applied, the, if we apply the criteria of our PSV and RA values uh, in those patients, we would have correctly predicted the presence of appendicitis. Among the patients that were operated, 16 were found to have appendicitis, while while three did not have appendicitis. All three of these patients had appendicular diameter between 6 to 8 mm. If we apply the criteria value from our study in this patient, our cutoff PSV actually correctly predicted the absence of appendicitis in all these patients, while RA correctly predicted absence of appendicitis in one out of these three patients. <laughs> the findings of our study were similar to those uh, uh, conducted by Shin et al., uh, which they found that on applying the criteria of cutoff PSV, to five patients, they would have provided correct diagnosis in four of the five patients. Uh, when it comes to the borderline category, uh, we had 14 patients in which five were operated. However, appendicitis was found only in two of them on histopathology. On applying our cutoff values of PSP and RI, uh, we found that the PSP predicted appendicitis with a sensitivity of 50%, specificity of 58.3%, PPV of 16.7% and NPV of 87.5%. The cutoff value of RI predicted appendicitis with a sensitivity of 50%, specificity of 41.7%, PPV of 12.5%, and NPV of 83.3%. So our results from, uh, for the borderline category were considerably, considerably different from study by Shin et al. and had lower sensitivity, specificity, and PPV. Only the negative predictive value was comparable between the two studies. So this difference was likely due to a lower number of patients we had in the borderline category and the shorter uh, time span of the study. In conclusion, spectral Doppler parameters, especially PSV, can prove to be a useful junk to grayscale USD in correctly predicting appendicitis, uh, even performing better than the criteria of maximum diameter.
In the borderline category, however, spectral parameters in our study did not perform as well as those in previous studies. However, the cutoff criteria of PSP correctly predicted the absence of appendicitis in three patients who were operated but were found to not have appendicitis. Uh, so, an additional studies with a larger sample size and a longer time span are recommended to corroborate this findings that could define the utility of spectral Doppler criteria in the context of borderline appendix diameter of 6 to 8 mm. These are my representative cases. The first case uh, shows a grayscale uh, uh, appendicular diameter in the uh, value of 8.7 mm. Uh, this is the image showing color Doppler. Uh, images and this is a spectral Doppler parameter. This patient was operated and this is the findings. This is the second case uh, in which the patient had a diameter of 7.1 mm and was subsequently operated. The patient had a, a diameter of 10 mm, however, uh, the PSC and RA values were lower. The patient was not operated and was managed conservatively. This is another patient in the borderline category of 6 to 8 mm. This patient had low spectral Doppler values and the patient was not operated and was managed conservatively. This patient actually had a greater diameter, had greater spectral Doppler parameter, but the patient was clinically well and was not operated and was managed conservatively. These are the differences. Thank you.